The intrigue continues in New York, where D.A. Bragg is leading a busy probe that, as the New York Times reports, they said it's on a, quote, likely path for a Trump indictment. It also includes an offer for Trump to face a grand jury. That news broke like a bomb going off for many. There's also a new meeting that prosecutors held with Stormy Daniels, who was paid by Trump and was at the center of the now convicted campaign crime that involved former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen, who testified this week. So that's a lot of what's been going on. The payment to Daniels could be central here. We know it was already charged once by the feds. Veterans of the DA office say it was under review, meaning even previously, over the last few years, it was being kicked around there. The New York Times, as I mentioned, reports it's back in the mix now. And then Trump's own lawyer, Joe Tacopina, is clearly focused on defending the payment's legality in an interview right here with me this week. It's a sign that Trump's team also views the payment as at least a potential issue for any charges. Tacopina insisting, in his view, that the payment was both legal, even if it wasn't really a payment for a lawyer, in fact, and he insisted and argued it was not, in his view, linked to any campaign objective. Is Stormy Daniels a lawyer? Is Stormy Daniels a lawyer? Yeah. I don't think she's a lawyer. I don't think a lawyer was a lawyer either, but <laughs> well, okay. Daniels well, is not a lawyer. That matters because, as you saw on the screen, and I'm going to get into this, if you say something's for a lawyer or legal expenses and it's not, well, you already have a lie right there. Now, that's all out there. There could also however, be new signs that Trump would face legal problems even if the New York DA never charges the payment as a type of campaign finance crime. Which brings us to this report right now. So I'm gonna get into this with you. There's a legal argument that the payment was lawful and then Trump broke the law by lying about it. So just think about it like this. You can pay money to buy a house. That's obviously legal. If you then lie to the IRS and your state government about it, about the money you spent or the money coming back to you, you're now breaking the law. Right there, just off that. Payment legal, lying about it, illegal, separately. The original purchase is legal. Now, there's a connection here to Michael Cohen's conviction, which has clues, and this has come up a little bit, but right now we're gonna do it in a little more detail so you can see what the case would be. And, make your own judgments, because this is part of what Mr. Takapina and I were discussing, but at a bit of a higher altitude. So let's get into it. The feds have the receipts that Trump's company literally posted that Daniels payment as legal expenses. They say the accounting for Daniels payment as legal expenses was done when Cohen submitted an invoice, which was not in connection with any legal services, just a lie. It's pretty cut and dry, it's in writing hiding that money by falsely claiming it was money for a lawyer. Now, unlike some other business practices where Trump has claimed he wasn't in the loop, here, what's also legally different is tapes showing that Trump personally worked on these solutions, if you want to call it that, and what the DA might ultimately call lies or misleading crimes, because he worked with a tabloid and Mr. Cohen to suppress accounts of more than one woman over time. Now, Trump's CFO would not testify against him in that other case. I'm going to get back to that. But Cohen's not exactly alone either right now. There's another Trump campaign advisor, a political operative and lawyer named A.J. Delgado. And she is posting a new criticism and allegation about the misuse of these kinds of legal fees. She says that misuse is what Trump world does. Quote, it's been going on for years. They'll pay someone off or settle with someone and to not admit they settled, disguise the payment as legal services. She points to what, in her opinion, she argues is a suspicious payment, recent one actually, that is only public because of the disclosure laws. It shows a Trump political action committee sent a huge sum, over two mil, for supposed or asserted legal consulting to a New York law firm, Kasowitz, Benson, Torres. Now, that actually would be a giant sum of money for a PAC to pay in short order, in a short amount of time, for legal fees in New York. Delgado is asking publicly whether it is hiding more settlements in this manner. Now today, we checked with that law firm for any comment. We did not hear back. If they comment or deny, we will of course report that. And Delgado is not offering other specifics or evidence. It might very well be a payment for really high priced lawyers and no other hidden item. But Trump's longtime CFO, Alan Weisselberg, 
was accused of things even worse than that, pleading guilty to 15 felony charges, fraud. This is all a type of fraud if you get caught doing it. Conspiracy, grand larceny. The Trump org also recently convicted for crimes about lying to authorities. You hear the pattern? 17 counts, tax fraud, scheming to defraud, conspiracy. This conviction is recent. It was won by the very DA leading this current case in New York. So you have a lot of evidence of lying and fraud that could build a case even if you don't go down that campaign finance lane. So, I, so I've got an expert as promised here to go through this along with Professor Murray who I told you is standing by, but let me try to sum it up like this as fairly as possible. A little bit of Tevye, if anyone remembers Fiddler on the Roof, more than one hand. On one hand, there are real questions about whether after all this, and I mean the last six years plus, or as far as the Trump IRS case is concerned, the last 20 years. If after all this, the first charge against a former president's gonna involve misdemeanors, accounting, and what critics call paperwork offenses, that's what we get? You could see reasonable, objective, factual people saying, I don't know if after all this, that's where you start, if that's enough. That's the one hand. Now for any Fiddler fans out there, there's the other hand. On the other hand, this is our justice system, and boy, has it been tested through all this. And our justice system has a duty to avoid being dragged down into an unjust and immoral set of arguments that very real crimes, which regular people, non-politically connected people, not rich people, go get in trouble for, that those real crimes are somehow too small to deal with right now when there are real victims, real lies, and... I will remind you, as mentioned in this report, a now convicted criminal enterprise and convicted CFO, but somehow, after all that, the actual owner and chief of that company is still operating basically with impunity? Now, if there's no evidence, again, that's got to be the end of it. Doesn't matter what you think of Mr. Trump's leadership or political record, there's not enough evidence, that's the end of it. But if there is evidence amidst these three other convictions in this area of repetitive, blatant fraud, Cohen, Weisselberg, and the Trump org, which I may remind you, was convicted here in America recently. If there's all that, and acting on the evidence is not gonna be done because of the risk, well, you have to ask yourself, what the heck is going on in New York or America? Because the risk, if there's evidence, would be a failure to act for reasons that aren't about evidence or justice.